All right, happy Halloween, I guess. I offered a bonus question that was worth 10 points on your last exam, so I will collect that right now. I will not take it at any point after now, because I'm going to actually do the problem. So, anybody have it for me? Um, you'll have to give me what you have right now. So you can tear it out. Yeah, I'll get them back. Not not right today, but. Do you feel like 10 points is a lot? It is a lot. It's a whole letter grade. Were the grades that bad? On the test? Yeah. Well, no, I have a bunch of students that want to do test retakes and all this. I'm offering you 10 points. Right? I mean, there you go. So if you don't have it, like, right? Okay, that's fine. The bottom section. Anybody else? Last call. No, 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 it's fine. Your name's on it? Yeah. Yep, I'll keep it. All of them. It's all right. I'll keep it together. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the problem that I offered you as a bonus. Uh, we had talked about building a particular, like a farmer was building this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And we had come up with a cost function. C of X was 110X plus 2400 over X. Was that yes, it? Sir. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what I basically sent you home with. And I said, you need to find the maximum, yeah. or, or sorry, that we want to look for the minimum value of this, right? Because this represented the cost for building those pens. So to do this, you had to take the derivative of that, set it equal to zero, figure out where you might be going down then up. So the derivative of this would be, let's see, what's the derivative of 110x? 110. And then this one, you might have to first realize that that's 2400 x to the negative 1. Rewrite it as that first. And then you can use your power rule where the negative comes out, <laughs> negative 1 comes out, 2400 x to what power? Negative two. negative 2. And then you have to set that equal to 0. And I thought this might throw people off with the negative 2 power. You're like, what is that? You know? So let's first set it equal to zero. So we take C prime, we set it to zero. If you have your bonus, if you have the bonus, do you have the bonus or no? No, okay. Set that to zero means you set 110 minus 2400. Now, I'm not gonna write this as x to the negative two. I'm gonna write it as one over x squared. That's the same thing, right? One over x squared. Okay, so in other words, this is over x squared. So I drop this down instead of putting this up. I need to set that to zero. Now this is not the only way you could do it. This is just the way that I'm doing it, all right? There's other, there's other methods. Um, now what you could do is since you have 110 equals, or sorry, 110 minus this equals zero, you can move this whole thing to the other side. It will become a plus, won't it? Okay, so I'm going to do that now. So I have 110 equals 2400 over x squared. And I'm trying to solve for x. So the next thing I could do is multiply both sides by x squared. And that would clear the fractions out here. And that would be 110 x squared, that's the left side, equals 2400. So now I'm going to divide by 110 on both sides. So if I take 2,400, like 28.818-ish, 28 so somewhere around there. That's what you get. And then you will take the square root. Okay.
1.67. Okay, that is the only critical number I have. All right, so what you would have needed to do, do next, you have to do this if you turn this in, you can't get the full 10 points if you don't do the next step. You have to show me that that's a local minimum. So you have to put 4.67 on the number line and you have to pick some test points. So something like one and maybe five, six, seven, eight, whatever, I'll put eight. And then plug those values into what? It, those are, what are we trying to figure out? If the function's going up or down, right? So I'm gonna plug it into the first derivative. Now, I think it might be easier if I, if I rewrote this first derivative with the x squared on the bottom, because it'll be a little easier for me to plug things in. So if I plug in one, I may not even have to do this on my calculator if I plug in one, because one squared is, is just one, right? One. And then this is 2,400, right? Divided by, divided by one is still 2,400. So 110 divided, or minus 2,400 is a negative number. Yeah, two, and, two, two, and remember, two, we, don't, two, two, nine, zero. <laughs> we don't care about what it is, right? We just care that it's negative. And that oh. tells us that the function is going down, right? So, so far, this is looking like a local minimum because our function c is going down here because the derivative was negative. Now, if we plug 8 in here, we square the 8, 2,400 divided by, what's 8 squared? 64. So if I do 8 in here, do 2,400 divided by 64, I get 37.5. So 110 minus 37.5, that's going to give me a positive number. That means that my function is going up here. And so this point, uh, 4.67 is a local minimum, right? And we have no local maximums. We have none because the function number goes up and then down. So that means my cost, right, this is our cost function. Our cost has a minimum value. The lowest cost we could get is if we let x be 4.67, all right? So we have cost is minimized if x is equal to 4.67. Now, I have not answered the questions because there were two questions that you had to answer for this bonus question. The first one, what are the dimensions of the actual enclosure that you're going to build? And the second question was, what is the minimum cost? But we should be able to get everything. Go back and you look at the notes last time. We called the distance from here to here x. And we I think we broke this into three pens, right? And we had said that this part right here was made out of wood that cost a certain amount, and then the rest of it was the chain link fence. So we said that that distance from here to here is x, and we know what x needs to be, right? 4.67? And then we, we also said that the distance from here to here was y, right? So we need to figure out, you know, how long is this side gonna be? So we need to know what y is, right? We know the distance all the way from here to here is three times y, because there's three of them, right? So we need to know what y is, and we, we know what x is. So you'd have to go back and look in the notes um, from last class. You'll see that when we were doing this problem, we had this equation x times y was 60. No. X times 3y. 3y. X times 3y was 60. Y That's right. And so we said that y was equal to 20 over x. That was somewhere in our work that we had done earlier. So this is the key to figure out what y is y is always going to be 20 over x. So we know what x is, right? So if we plug it in, we get our, we get our y value. So 20 divided by 4.67. 4.28. So this means that y is 4.28. So what are the dimensions of this pen? This is 4.67, right? And this from here to here is that times 3. Understand? 12.84. 12.84 or 12.85, something like that. 
So if we build it this way, where this is 12.84 feet, this is 4.67 feet, with uh, wood, wood, and then the rest chain link, we will get the minimum cost. And it will still have an area of 60 square feet, which is one of the requirements. And so this gives us the dimensions, right? So this would be the answer to one part of the problem right there. You could have also just written this. I will take that also. Um, but we haven't answered what the, what the minimum, minimum cost is. So how do we figure out what the minimum cost is? Mm. This x value is where we have the minimum cost, right? But what is the minimum cost? You have to take this value and plug it into the original, the original function. The original cost function, right? This is the cost. So if I replace that with 4.67 and that with 4.67, I will get my cost. So C of 4.67 is 110 times 4.67 plus 2400 over 4.67. What is it? 1027? I'm, I'm going to verify because this was a 4.67. Okay. Yep. 1,000. Twenty uh, twenty-seven. Sixty-two. Sixty-one, sixty-two. There it is. The original yes. um, function was in 110x plus 2400y? It, it wasn't 2400y, it was something else y. It was 110x plus 120. Oh. What's, what, 120y. But it, yes, but that's okay. If you use that one and you replace y with this, you'll get the same answer. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did the 12.84 times 3. I'd have to look at it. Okay. I'd have to look at what you did. Okay, so this is saying that with that problem that, we, that I gave you, right? If, if the pins have to give a total area of 60, uh, 60 square feet, the cheapest way that we could possibly build this is this right here. That's the cheapest way we could do it. Any other way we build the pins will be more expensive. So what I was trying to get you to see last time is that the whole idea behind this is you know, if, if you're going to go charge someone to build this for them, right? Like, let's say you're the fence company. Then let's say you're going to charge them. How much do you think they would charge them for this? $2,000. Uh, probably like 3500 $3, or something like that. Labor. There's a lot of labor cost in there. That's just the cost of materials. I don't know. That's Whatever, $3,500, let us say, right? So if, let's say that that's how much I'm going to charge them, right? Well, that's how much the materials are going to cost, right? Something like that. Then I'm going to make whatever the difference is, is, is money in my pocket, right? Now, if I don't care about optimization, then I might build a pen a certain way, and my cost might turn out to be like 30, uh, you know, 1350, let's say, right? What I've done now is I've just thrown money away, haven't I? I've just completely thrown money away. Because I've, I haven't cared about optimizing my cost function, so I could have done it for, for cheaper. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. I have a question, sir. Yes. Uh, for those who are good at they got it wrong. Are they easy? Like, I have to see what you, what you have on paper. Everybody, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I will always consider partial credit. I need to see what you did, though. Yeah, I'm not looking for like, you better have the right answer at the very end or it's like you don't get anything. Okay, but, but to be clear, I'm not gonna accept that now. Like if you, I will not accept it if you turn it in at this point, That's like it's, it's over. Uh, I put the answer at the term 27, 22, because the most thing is the height. So this would be a The height? Yeah, it would be a one foot tall. Uh, assuming it's a one foot tall, I put, assuming this is a one foot tall fence, <laughs> uh, it would cost 1,000. The cost was per linear foot of fencing? But we were, I think we said, well, I'm, we may not have said it, but we were assuming that that includes the, the height, like yeah, six yeah. foot fence or eight foot fence. Yeah. yeah. That's everything. 
That accounted for everything. Oh, so it's not like one chain link on one side? Nope. Okay, we're going to do more word problems. And you all, I mean, if you were me looking out at y'all, y'all look thrilled. Just oh, absolutely really? thrilled. Uh, you don't. You have a test on Monday, right? Yes, this is continuing 12.6, sorry. Maximizing revenue and profit. Now, here's what I plan on doing for this test. I plan on putting out a review for this that I'm going to send to you through Canvas. I'm hoping I can get that review out to you sometime by tomorrow. And then I will include the answers to that review probably by Friday. And that way you have something you can look over on the weekend. It will give you a good idea of what to expect on the test. Just like all the other tests have been, they've been very similar to the review. That's, what, that's what's going to happen, OK? All right, so be looking in your, your Canvas email for that um, pretty soon here. All right. Yeah, we haven't finished 12.6 at all. Like, we still have a ways to go. And I don't, we're not going to finish 12.6 today, for sure. So, OK. So let's do an um, optimization, optimization uh, problem involving revenue. And I'm just going to take this as an example out of the book, because um, I want it to look like what you're going to see on your homework or on the test. So we have an office supply company that sells um, permanent markers. All right, so you have a company that sells X permanent markers per year. At P dollars per marker. The price demand equation is this P equals ten minus zero point zero zero one X. What should we charge to maximize revenue? All of these optimization problems that we do are going to be asking one of two things, either for you to find the maximum of a function or the minimum of a function. It's one, one, one of the two, all right? Um, so let's start out with trying to figure out what the function is that we're trying to maximize. So what are we trying to find the maximum of? What function? Revenue, right? says, what should we charge, right? That's how much we should charge per marker. What should we charge to maximize revenue? <laughs> so the function we're going to be working with is the revenue function. I'm just going to use capital R for revenue. And what is revenue, the revenue function, or how do we determine revenue for our company? And this is the general formula we all have to remember. It's what? P times X. Where does that come from? What's the idea here? X is the number of units that we sell, right? The number of markers we sell is X. And P is the price per marker. So if we sell 100 markers at $2, we'll make $200, right? So this is what we always use to figure out our revenue function. Units sold, price per unit. 
All right, but if we're trying to find the maximum of this, we need this to have just one variable in it. Just one variable. And what is the relationship that we have here? Um, we have this, right? Price demand equation. That tells me that I can replace the P with 10 minus 0.001x, right? If I wanted to. So that's what I'm going to do. So my revenue is x times 10 minus 0.001x. And that means my revenue can now be looked at as a function of x, right? Because I only have one variable in here now, and that's x. And I'm going to distribute x through here and here. So my revenue is 10 times x minus 0.001x squared, right? OK, there it is. That is all of these problems we're going to want to try and determine what function we're trying to maximize or minimize. We said it was revenue. And then we're going to actually try and find the function itself in terms of a single variable. So here it is. So now we're back to what we've been doing last week or two, which is finding max and min, right? Using the derivative. Now, we have two ways of doing this. Sorry. Two ways. It's either on a closed interval or on an open interval. So is there anything that you can tell me about x that you know for sure? Like, is x between any, does x have to be between any two things? What is x? The number of markers we saw, right? So it's got to be bigger than 0, right? I mean, maybe it could be 0. I'm going to say the only restriction we have here is that x must be bigger than or equal to 0. Do you all agree with that? We're not going to sell a negative number of markers. But is there anything else that has to happen here? Do you agree that our price must be greater than 0 also? Do you all agree with that? I mean, we're not giving this stuff away, right? We're not paying people to take our markers. So our price has to be positive also. So we also have that the price must be greater than or equal to 0, yeah? Now, what is price? It's this, right? So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to replace P with 10 minus 0.001x. That must be greater than or equal to 0. Ooh, that look OK? The price has to be greater than or equal to 0, or else we're giving markers away, right? Um, and then that means that this, because this is what price is, right, has to be greater than or equal to 0. And what I'd like for you to do here is just move things around. So I'm going to have to erase some things. Where'd it go? There it is. So what I'm doing here on this one, I'm going to move the negative part to the other side. So I get 10 must be greater than or equal to 0.001x. And then I'd like to divide both sides by 0 0.001. So what is 10 divided by 0 0.001? 0 10,000. 10,000. Is that, right? So now look at, look at we have two, two conditions here. We have that x must be smaller than this, right? x must be smaller than or equal to 10,000, but it must be greater than or equal to 0. We have a closed interval as opposed to non-closed. What does that mean to us? Do you all remember what, what the big difference is now if we have a closed interval as opposed to, to not closed? We have an absolute maximum. And the way we do this is a little bit different. We don't have to do a table where we go up, down. We don't have to do that. So at the end of this, here's what I can conclude. We're trying to find the, the maximum value of this, right, on the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10,000. Okay, That's my restriction. That is a closed interval.
expect you to write what? If you're going to use the closed interval method, if you're going to use the method that involves the closed interval, you're going to have to get that, aren't you? You would have to. You have to know the two endpoints. Let me go, let me finish this off and you'll see why we have to know those two values. Okay, let's see if you can recall from last class and perhaps your homework how you find the maximum, absolute maximum value of this function on a closed interval. So what are the steps? Hmm? Take the derivative, okay, so take our derivative. What is our derivative? 10, okay. 10 minus 0 0.002 x, right? So we take our derivative. Now what? Set that equal to zero. So take that equal to zero. Move this over. And then what? Divide by point zero zero two. So what happens if I divide by point zero zero two? What do I get? Five thousand. X is five thousand. Do you all know what to do with at this point or no? Okay, so the number line, we could use a number line if we didn't have a closed interval. But we have a closed interval, so we have another way we could do this. Now, how many of you feel like you really are comfortable with the number line and would rather just do it that way? Yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of you, from, at least from my sense up here, probably feel more comfortable with the number line at this point. And you could do that. So let's, let's do this. Let me show you the way you do it on a closed interval. And then I will do it with the number line just to, to verify we get the same result. The way you do this right now is that you find your critical numbers. We have 5,000, right? That's the only one we have? Uh -huh. What we do is we take that number and we plug it into the original function and see what the answer is. And then we also plug what else into the original function? The endpoints, end which are 0 and 10,000. So if you're doing it, the closed interval method, you're going to plug in 5,000 into the original function, you're going to plug in 0 into the original function, and you're going to plug in 10,000 into the original function. And when you do that, the biggest value you get out is your maximum, and the smallest you get out is your minimum. Does this ring a bell from last class a little bit? Okay, so Let's plug in zero, because I like zero first. It's easiest, right? Here's our original function. Plug zero in here, zero in here. What do we get? Zero. zero. So does it make sense that if x is zero, x was what? The number. number of units we sell. If we don't sell anything, we're not making money, right? That makes sense? OK, so what about if, if uh, we, we replace this with uh, 10,000? I think we're going to get zero again. So someone can check. but. You put uh, 10,000 there, and that'll be 100,000. Then you square 10,000. Yeah, you get zero. So then plug in 5,000. See what you get. You get 2,500? 25,000. 25, yeah, you should get 25,000 here. So what is the maximum revenue? That's the maximum revenue, right? 
All right. Now, I know some of you write things down. Some of you don't. So somebody that's writing stuff down, go back and look at what was the original question. What is, what is it that you're being asked in this problem? No, what should we charge? What is that asking for? Price. We have not answered that question. This is where most students lose the credit on the exam. If they can get through this part, they tell me the answer is 25,000. That's not correct. They'll tell me the answer is 5,000. That's not correct. The question was, what does the price need to be to maximize our revenue? Right? And when you don't have we have X. What is, OK, so let's understand what these numbers mean. X, the, the maximum revenue, what is the maximum revenue? is $25,000. That's the most that we could possibly make under this model, okay? Now, what is the number of units sold to get maximum revenue? 5,000. 5,000. And that's because X was 5,000, right? That's where we had the maximum happening. X was the number of units we sell. So the question that's being asked in the problem is, what is the price? So the price is, oh well, the price which gets maximum revenue. How are you going to figure out the price? What is the price? How do we already have it? We, we did have that equation. We had price was 10, was it 10 minus? 10 minus, yes. Um, 0. 0.001x. That was it, right? That was our price equation? So we know that when x is 5,000, we get the most revenue. But we need to plug 5,000 into here to get the price. Understand? Yes. So to get our price, we get 10 minus. 0 0.001 times 5,000. That was our x value. And what does that turn out to be? Five dollars? Is it five? Five. Five dollars. Pardon? I did not divide those. Oh, could you? Is that what you're saying? No, you can't just divide these two. It all, it's all based upon what the price demand equation was given to you. It, it might be coincidental, but it's not always true. I thought I saw another hand. Uh, same thing? Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't just always do that. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I, can, see, I can see what people get it wrong because after the long process, you've got to do a long process just to find X. So let me, let me, this is going to be like the only problem, well, we're going to just add some, another layer to this problem now. Right now, our company, based on this information, we will have a maximum revenue of $25,000 if we sell 5,000 markers at $5 per marker. Agreed? Agreed. Yes? Y'all are so enthusiastic, I swear. Yes? Yes. OK. What we have not taken into consideration is our cost, right? Our company, it, it actually costs money to run our company. So let's add that element into the problem now. But please remember that right now, to maximize revenue, we need to sell 5,000 markers at $5 per piece or per marker, and our maximum revenue will be $25,000, okay? As a company, though, that is not, I'm not going to base everything off of this, because I have to take into consideration my cost now. So, suppose, the same company, has, a cost function 
of c of x equals 5,000 plus 2x. And this is measured in dollars here. <clears throat> Let's first understand what this cost function means. X, x is the same x from the previous problem. So x is the what? What's x again? The, uh, the number of units that we sell, right? The number of units we sell. So according to this model for this company, if we don't sell anything, zero, how much is it going to cost us to run this business? $5,000. $5,000, right? Electricity, employees, whatever, right? If we sell two markers, right, then we are going to do two here, four, that's going to cost us $5,004, right? If we sell 100 markers, it's going to obviously increase our cost, yes? yes. So, so here's our, <laughs> thank you. Here is the new question, the new question for this company. Find the price which maximizes, not revenue, what do you think is more important to us than, than revenue? Profit. Profit. Remember the difference between profit and revenue? After the cost, right? So revenue is just the money that's coming in. Cost is the money that's going out. Profit is the money that's left at the end. Agreed? Would you all agree that this is probably more important to us than revenue? We want to know at the end of the day, after we pay our employees and pay the electric bills, how much money are, do we still have? That's our profit, right? Right now, if we, look at, if we look at what we looked at in the first part of this problem, we said, okay, we should sell 5,000 markers at $5 a piece, we'll bring in $25,000. That's the best it could ever be for us, right? But that was only looking at revenue. Now, if we bring cost into it, let's see if we get a different answer. What do you all think? Do you think we're gonna get a different answer if we bring cost into this? Yes. Think we're gonna have to adjust our price? Yes, absolutely, we're gonna have to. All right, so let's see. See what happens. So first thing I'm going to do is remember that profit equals revenue minus cost. That's from 1324. Profit is revenue minus cost. Now, do we have a revenue function? We did from the previous problem, right? It was, what was the revenue function? Yeah, it was x times p, but when we did it, we got what, 10, it was 10x minus 0.001x squared, right? That, wasn't that revenue? Now minus, see this is the big difference now. Now what we're doing, this was our revenue function from the previous problem. And now our costs are given to us by this one, right? By that? So minus 5,000 plus 2x. And I need that in parentheses. Why do I need that in parentheses? You're minus, you're subtracting the whole cost, right? So you're subtracting both the 5,000 and this part. All right, so what is, what is our profit function then? It is a function of x because notice everything in here has x in it, right? Can you combine any of this together? Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, this 10x, and I can take away 2x, right? So that's going to give me 8x's. And I also have this piece here. So how about I write it in descending order? I'm going to go highest power of x down plus 8x, and then minus 5,000. Maybe you should go home or go lay out on a bench or something. I mean, really, you can't. You're not going to hurt my feelings. You offend me more sleeping in class than you would if you weren't here. 
No, I'm just letting, letting you know. Okay. So I said you should go out, like do a couple push-ups, do something, wake yourself up. Okay, what do we got? This is our profit function, right? And what are we trying to do with this profit function? Find the maximum. And so if we find the maximum, we're going to need to take a derivative and all that, right? Now, we didn't do the number line last time. I, saw, I said I was going to go back and do it. I, I never did. Is that okay? Yeah. That other method's pretty clean, right? But you still have to find the endpoints. Those are the same for this problem. I mean, it's the same thing because it's the same company, right? Zero and 10,000. But I think for this one, um, why don't I do it with the number line? Because a lot of you said you like the number line. Yes? Could you, instead of using the number line, just use that method? Like the zero and the 10,000? Yeah. Yes. Just like we did before. Yes. Right. Uh huh. Yep. Because we have the same restrictions on x. Remember, x is the number of markers we sell. So it has to be greater than or equal to zero has to be um, less than 10,000. So we have the same endpoints. Either way, we need the derivative, don't we? Okay, so let's go derivative. And this will be negative 0.002x. Then what? Plus eight. Plus eight. That's it. We're gonna set that equal to zero. So negative uh, 0.002x plus 8 equals 0. And I think we've played this game enough, right? Move this thing over, divide through. So I think we get 4,000, don't we? Hmm. X is 4,000. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, what, what I could do now is plug 4,000 into the profit function, right? Plug in what else? And then plug in 10,000 and compare them, all right? But I'm going to do this one with the number line just because I said I would on the last one I didn't. So I put 4,000 here, and then I pick some points here and here. So what? 3, oh, I, th I thought you said three. I was like, that's kind of random. How about one? I love one. Why is one good? One is very easy to plug into something, right? And then over here, I mean, yeah, 5,000. Okay, go with 5,000. And what we're hoping to see here, what are we hoping to see? You tell me. The function goes up or down? Up and down. That's what we really want to see is up and down because that will be a, a maximum, won't it? So let's plug one into the profit function. Uh, not, not to the profit, to the what? To the derivative, right? Into this, <clears throat> plugging into this. So if I plug in one right here, <clears throat> I get negative 0.002 plus eight. That's gotta be positive, right? Yeah, it's, it's positive. So this means that my profit is going up. Good, good so far. <clears throat> now we plug 5,000 into this. And if you plug 5,000 in here and multiply by that number, it's negative, you should get a negative number here. Okay? So that means that our profit here is going down, not revenue profit. It's a weird looking P. Okay, profit's going down. So that means we have a maximum at 4,000, right? So if you like that way, do it that way. If not, you can do the closed interval method if you want. All right? We haven't answered the question, have we? What have we determined? We have max, max profit when x is 4,000. Now x is uh, the number of markers that we sell, right? Yep. Okay. What is the maximum profit? I mean, what is our maximum profit going to be? What, how do we figure out how much money we're actually going to make at the end of the day? Plug 4,000 4, into the original. the original profit function, right? So the max profit is P of 4,000. And I might need someone to do that. Well, I'll do it on my phone. 11, it's 11,000? You did it? Okay, thank you. It's 11,000. 
right? And finally, we get the max profit when the price is what? So how do we figure out the price? Go back to that price equation, right? Which I've erased from here. But price was 10 minus 0.001x. Was that it? Yep. That was our price. So if we replace this with 4,000, then what do we get? Six, Six bucks. Right, so if we replace this right here with 4,000, we get six. So somebody that has their calculator out and feels pretty comfortable with this, I would like somebody to plug 5,000 into this for me. Somebody do 5,000 squared times that plus eight times 5,000 minus 5,000. And when you get an answer, let me know. You get 10,000? We'll get someone else to verify that? 10,000? So P of 5,000 was 10,000. Now let me kind of explain why I wanted to do that. The first part of this problem, we were talking about maximizing revenue, right? Revenue is just money in. And we said, if we sell 5,000 markers at $5 a piece, we will, make, we will bring in the most money, right? But do you see that when we include the cost function into the problem, we actually have a different, we have a different optimum answer. Now what we want to do is we want to have sell 4,000 pens, markers or whatever, at $6 a piece, and then our profit will be 11,000, which is better than what it would have been if we would have stayed at 5,000 pens for five bucks. So in this particular model, it's better to crank our price up a dollar a pen. We should expect to sell a little less but our profit in the end will be more, okay? Because the less pens we make, the less cost there is too. So we, it's, it's factoring everything into, into um, one final result. So, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. To get the maximum, to get this 11,000? Yeah. See how I've written P of 4,000? Right? Yes, because that says P, not P prime. Not P right? This is P, so that goes into here. If that would have been P prime, then it would have been in here. And we got $6,000. $6, we plugged in 4,000 into oh. our equation for P. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to give you one to work on. And that's what we're going to do for the remainder of the class. All right, so here we go. I'm going to give you this information. I'm going to give you this particular company has a price demand equation. Is P equals, you know what, let's make this a quiz. You can work together. Maybe that'll motivate you a little bit more. And then I'm going to tell you that its cost, this company's cost is 60,000 plus 60x. I'm also going to give you one more piece of information here. I'm going to tell you that x has to be between 
zero and 10,000. The question here, the only question I have is find price which maximizes profit. This is exactly like the problem we just did. I'm giving you a different price demand equation. I'm giving you a different cost function. I'm telling you the restrictions on X, so everything is going to be built the same way. So let's see how, how good you are in terms of retaining the information that I just discussed. <laughs> 